told you that you can run a full-time business, you could go to school, or you could work in another full-time career, all while still serving in the United States Air Force. And this video, I'm going to share with you just how you can do that in the Air Force Reserves. I'm also going to share the pros and cons and the different types of programs in the Air Force Reserves and what you can serve under. If you're not familiar with the differences between the different components such as active duty, Air Force Reserves, or the Air National Guard, be sure to watch my previous video that I filmed discussing those three different types of components. The main topic of this video will just be primarily on the Air Force Reserves and exactly what I'm doing when I transition out of active duty. And for those of you that are interested in the Space Force, be sure to stick around to the end of this video and I'm going to share with you something real cool that we're releasing. So now that you know what this video is about, cue the intro. So what is the Air Force Reserves? The Air Force Reserves is a part-time component of the United States Air Force, and it also can turn into a full-time if you are on active duty orders. The best thing about the Air Force Reserve, especially if you're active duty, is that it allows you to continue serving your country, and then it also gives you the opportunity to work in a civilian job, or if you run your own business, or if you wanna go back to school full-time, you can do it. So one of the biggest difference about being active duty and reserves is gonna be your pay, your benefits, and obviously, the amount of time you work. And now I have discussed all of these differences between active duty, reserves, and guard in the previous video, and I'll link that again to the right side of this video if you're interested in watching that first. But yeah, those are the main differences between the active duty and the reserves. If you're in the Air Force Reserves, you're obviously not gonna be working full-time unless you are on active duty orders. So of course, your pay is gonna be a lot less than an active duty member, but you'll still get to reap majority of the benefits that active duty members get. What are the benefits of being in the reserves? One of the biggest benefits in the Air Force Reserves that you now have is time for your family and also time for yourself if you wanna start your own business, if you wanna go to school, or if you wanna work another full-time career as a civilian. Another benefit in the Air Force Reserves is that you get 100% tuition just like an active duty member. You get $4,500 per fiscal year for your tuition just like active duty and you also get all of the on-the-job training that active duty members get when you are reporting in for duty. Air Force Reserve members are also entitled their GI Bill once you have met the qualification period of how long you've been in and that's another benefit that you have to take advantage of or you can pass it to your family member because you're already getting your full tuition through the Air Force Reserve. Another benefit of the Air Force Reserves is a supplemental income to your civilian job or business because it is only a part-time job and you're only getting paid for the days you work it's not gonna be a full-time income being in the Air Force Reserve so it's more of a supplemental income to your civilian income you can put that into anything if you want to put it into stocks or savings or whatever whatever you want to do with that you also have access to all the base installations you have access to the BX the commissary you have access to low cost TRICARE as well so you can still have medical and dental insurance covered for you and your family at a low cost. I think something that's also so great about the reserves is the ability to network even more than what you were doing in active duty. I say this because while you're doing your civilian job, you're obviously making your connections, your networks in that position. And then when you come in for your duty, there's so many other reservists that have civilian jobs that are reservists as well that could be in a variety of different fields or industries and that's a great opportunity to network with those individuals and you guys can collaborate together and if you need something that I think that's one of the greatest opportunities in the reserves is the networking opportunity. If you want to be in a different career field you can cross train out of your career field much easier in the reserves compared to active duty. What I'm trying to cross train into is combat camera. Combat camera essentially trains with all the combat oriented career fields. Their primary duty is to document and capture the mission that is going on with videography and photography, what I love doing. And they're also trained on ground combat skills and they're able to support the fight if they need to put that camera down and pick their weapon up. A lot of my friends in the reserves have told me that it's been so much easier in the reserves to cross train, to go TDY, to volunteer for deployments, to go to courses that you've always wanted to go to. And these are the biggest reasons why I want to go into the reserves as well because of the opportunities you now have. In the reserves, you also have more freedom, more flexibility, and you're able to choose where you want to serve. So for example, right now I'm in the process of applying for vacancies throughout the world for an IMA position and I'll, I'll discuss what the IMA program is later on in this video. But what it essentially does is it allows you to apply for any unit with, an, with a vacancy. If they approve you, you can move to that unit. Whereas active duty, you're stuck on a four or six year tour if you're overseas or if you're stateside, you're stuck there for a different amount of time. And that is why I think that that's so cool about the reserves too. You have more control over where you go and you just have more control on your side of things whereas active duty it's more so okay you can put where you want to go but it's more of a like they call it a dream sheet because it's not always guaranteed so that's one of the biggest things too as well that i like about the reserve in the air force reserves you are also still entitled to a 20-year 
retirement plan with the DOD rolling out the blended retirement system that is another video topic that I will discuss in the future I did opt into the blended retirement system because I did not think I was gonna do a full 20 years on active duty or the reserves at that time like I said I am in the blended retirement system so when I hit my 20 year mark I still will be able to retire from the Air Force reserves but I won't have access to those funds until a later date and I'll discuss that in the next topic that's one of the cons of the Air Force Reserve another benefit about the Air Force Reserves is you have been prior active duty and you did leave active duty with service related medical issues and you were given a VA rating you are able to still have a VA disability paycheck a lot of people are confused with it saying that you can't have a VA paycheck and be in the reserves I want to dispel that myth immediately my in-service recruiter even verified this I've looked this up on the VA's website as well you can still ha get a VA disability paycheck as long as you are not on active duty orders and as long as you are not on your regular duty for the reserve. So for example, with the IMA program, I'm doing one month out of the year. During the one month out of the year, I cannot receive my VA disability paycheck. So 11 out of the 12 months, I can get my VA disability paycheck, but the month I'm doing my IMA duty, I'm not able to get a VA disability paycheck because it's double dipping essentially. You're getting two paychecks from the government. So that's something I'll post a link as well. I'll cite my source there as well for, for those of you that are questioning it or don't believe me. I'll post a link there below that you can look it up as well. It shows the regulations and everything. But that is one of the coolest thing about the reserves too is that you can get your disability if you were prior active duty too. So those are the majority of the pros that I have found about the Air Force Reserves. Now you might be wondering, okay, what are some of the cons of the Air Force Reserves? The only two main cons that I've personally found is one is your retirement. So with active duty, like I said earlier, if you do a full 20 years, you get access to your pension, to your retirement, the day you retire at your 20 year mark. So say I did 20 years on active duty, when I retire and get out, everything's completed, I get access to my full retirement, a paycheck every month, whereas reserves you only get access to your retirement once you hit the age of 60 years old now you can bring that time down if you are on active duty orders is a whole different calculation how many days and months and years they subtract from your your total or if you go on deployments and stuff it does bring that number down but you're still up in that high 50 60 you know age limit that you can't access your funds and so whereas if you join the Air Force at 18 years old like I did and I did a full 20 I'd be out at say 38 39 so that's one of the biggest cons I guess the grass is always greener on the side and is a, a double-edged sword yes I'm joining the reserves so that I can have more freedom flexibility and be able to focus on my business goals and do a new career that I'm ambitious about but at the same time you're kind of giving up that full retirement at the age of 38 to 40 years old the average with everyone else that joined at 18 so yeah, that's one of the negatives about being in the reserves is the retirement age and having that access or paycheck second thing I guess is that is kind of a con of the reserves I don't really it's not really a con to me because I mean you join the military to serve and fight for your country but I guess it would be titled a con is if you're a reservist you're obviously you have a full-time civilian career you might be running your business you can be involuntarily recalled whether you like it or not if, even if you had your one month of tour scheduled for December you can still be involuntarily recalled if there's a war or if there's any conflict that commander-in-chief ends up activating the reservist you will be brought into active duty and you will be serving an X amount of time. I honestly can't tell you how long you would be on active duty orders. It really depends on the situation. But that I guess is one negative or con of being in the reserves. And for me, like I said, I don't see it as a con because you still are serving your country and you, you chose to still serve. Of course, you're expected to fight and serve your country if you're if you're ever called upon. So I don't really see that as a con, but it's just listed on one of the cons. But those are out there that really want to know what the real cons are. So yeah, those are the pros and cons of the Air Force Reserves. Now you might be wondering, what are some of the programs under the Air Force Reserves that you can serve under? So the first one I want to get into is the traditional reservist. That is the traditional weekend warrior, what people like to call it as. I mean, it's, <laughs> it is kind of a funny term, but it is kind of true. Uh, you work one week in a month, you report in for duty one week in a month, whatever unit you're at. Normally, this would be typically be a stateside assignment. And you would do your training, your duty, everything training related or stuff you got to catch up on, stay qualified on. You do that during that time frame. And then you also have two weeks out of the year that you would also have to report in as well for an annual tour. So that is traditional service. It's one week in a month. Think of it, week and warrior, and plus the two weeks. And the next one is the IMA Reserve Program. That's what I am doing right now. Great thing about the IMA Reserve Program is instead of reporting in one weekend per month, I'd rather serve the entire annual tour in one month 
out of the whole year. So that's the great thing about the IMA Reserve Program is that you're able to serve 39 days consecutively. So it's a little bit more than a month, but you get to do it all in one time crunch instead of spreading it out. And not everyone's job that they're gonna be in or business that they're running will give them the time flexibility. Great thing about the IMA Reserve Program, it allows you to have more flexibility to choose, hey, this is the month I wanna report in for duty. Of course, upon agreement with your unit as well. And it will give you more of a window that, hey, okay, I can expect every year, this is the month that I have my tour or my duty that I gotta, I got to commit to. So it makes it easier, in my opinion, if you're running a business or if you have another full-time career compared to a traditional reservist where you gotta go in one weekend per month plus the two weeks out of the year. The cool thing about the IMA Reserve Program is that you can also be assigned to units overseas and not just stateside. With the traditional reserve program, you can only be assigned to a stateside assignment to my knowledge and to what my in-service recruiter told me. So that's a cool thing about the IMA program as well. The third program under the Air Force Reserve is the Air Reserve Technician Program. What this program is, is you're essentially dual-hatted. So for example, picture an IT specialist. Say I'm an IT specialist. If I'm a GS employee and I'm doing IT full-time Monday to Friday, I'm doing that and I'm also doing it as my reserve duty as a reservist during my one weekend every month plus my two weeks out of the year. So that's a quick breakdown of what the Air Reserve Technician Program is. You're doing the same job in your full-time role as a GS employee, but you're also doing it as a reservist. The fourth program is the PIRR. You know how the military loves our acronyms. PIRR stands for Participating Individual Ready Reserve Program. This program is a points only program and it's only for specific career fields. There are six career fields under the PIRR program that you can apply for. The first one is the Civil Air Patrol Reserve Program. The second is the Air Force Admissions Liaison Officer Program. The third is the Chaplain Service Program. The fourth is the JAG Reinforcement Designee Program. The fifth is the Medical Program. And the sixth is the Ready Reinforcement Personnel Section. So that is the PIR or Personal Individual Ready Reserve Program. It's only available for six different career fields that you can apply under. And those are all the different programs under the Air Force Reserve that you can serve under. So as you can see, there's so many different programs in the Air Force Reserve that you can apply for and the, the sky's li the limit, honestly. You have more opportunities in the Air Force Reserve. And the purpose of this video is not to push people away from joining active duty or pulling people away that are active duty that want to go reserves. It's m more so to educate those that are not aware what the reserves has to offer. Because I didn't even know the reserves had all this to offer until I started looking into it on my way out. But yeah, so to recap everything we went over, the Air Force Reserve is a part-time component of the Air Force that you can serve under as a part-time role or even a full-time role if you are activated. The Air Force Reserves has several benefits being, for example, 100% tuition assistance. You still get your veterans assistance uh, disability paycheck. You get your access to the base, the BX, commissary, low cost lo uh, health insurance, dental insurance. So plenty of benefits. And then the different programs associated with the Air Force Reserves, such as the traditional reservist program, IMA reserve program, Air Reserve Technician program, and the PIRR program. So I I hope this video has really clarified to you what the Air Force Reserve is and all of the pros and cons within the Air Force Reserve, as well as the different programs associated with the Air Force Reserve, so that way you have more options to apply for and not just be stuck with just the traditional reservists because that's all that you would think that is in the reserves like I had originally thought. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button and also consider subscribing. If you do subscribe, make sure you hit the notification bell so that way you don't miss out on any future videos that I create. And if you have any further questions, make sure you comment down below what you want to find out if I didn't answer it in this video. If you found this video very beneficial and informative and you think your friends or family might enjoy it or benefit from it, be sure to share it with them as well. And for those of you that stuck around to the end of the video, I did say in the beginning of the video that I would be unveiling something that we are releasing soon. For those that are Space Force fanatics like myself, my clothing brand, Morale Chick Apparel, we are releasing our Space Force merch. It's coming out later this month on May 29th, the release date of Space Force on Netflix. If you are not familiar with that show, it's a hilarious show. It's featured Steve Carell, he's in The Office, one of our favorite shows. The clothing brand is gonna be releasing our Space Force merch, so if you are interested in it, make sure you head over to the website, link below. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with others, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Some people look to the stars and ask, what if? John, your package is here.